Hello, Zoo Crew! Welcome to Critter Chats. I'm your host, Shelby Lewis, and this is my web series where I teach you about animals. Today, we are going to be learning about snakes. So this is my friend, Harrison. He is a gopher snake. And these guys are actually one of the most widespread snakes in North America. So he doesn't really have exactly one habitat, but we found this guy near a railway. So we're assuming he took a train to North Dakota and hitched a ride. So he's living here in Stevens Hall at NDSU, go Bison. And I was one of his caretakers during my undergrad. So him and I are pretty close. He's a sweet boy and he's gonna help me teach you guys today. Harrison never stops moving. He's a very active snake. And a common misconception about snakes is that they're mean and that they're slimy and gross, which is not true. Harrison is a total sweetheart. He's not slimy. He's very smooth, but snakes aren't wet and slimy like people think. And as you can see, I can get right up close to him. He doesn't mind me. He's comfortable with me. I'm comfortable with him. Obviously, you don't want to go pick up a wild snake, but if you know them, if they're captive, normally they're completely fine. They're nothing to be afraid of. And these guys actually are commonly, oh, where are you going? Commonly mistaken for rattlesnakes in the wild. So people are scared of them because of that, but they're completely harmless, let's be honest. Obviously a bite from one of these guys isn't gonna feel great, but they don't bite very often. And these guys, can get up to four to nine feet. Harrison's probably about five and a half now, almost six feet. So he's got a little bit to go. He could get a little fatter and his head's really small for his size, but he's still cute, isn't he? Right? Will you stop moving for five seconds so I can get you on camera? Snake! So our next snake I'm gonna take out, his name is Sirius Black. He is a black pine snake and he is threatened on the endangered species list. So um, the importance of a snake hook, I'm gonna teach you guys about, is that whenever you're picking up a snake that sometimes is uncomfortable with being handled, which honestly you should just do it with any snake to be precautious, but is to have the first point of contact be with something other than your body. So you would scoop up the snake around the middle of the body to give them some support. And then once you feel that they're comfortable, then they're, they're not scared um, and that they're not in an S position ready to strike, then you know that they're comfortable enough to be picked up and then you give them ample weight on each side of their body so that they can be held comfortably. So Sirius is a little bit more uncomfortable with being held than Harrison is. So I'm going to pick him up with a snake hook and we'll see how this goes. So black pine snakes are usually commonly found in the southern U.S. And when they are angry, they can inflate and raise their forebody and hiss very, very loudly. So he might hiss at me when I touch him. He's a very vocal snake and it's not uncommon for him. So he's not going to bite me. He's just angry. <laughs> Come here. Hi, Grumpy. The name Sirius Black was honestly very, a very good name for him because he's always serious. You gonna be mad? Can I pick you up? I mean, if you if if you don't want me to, I won't. But come here. Wow, my snake hook is not having it right now. We're coming from the other side here. He's mad. He's pissed, sir. See, okay, so as you can see, if you can see in there, when I'm picking him up with the snake hook, he has an S formation and he's rattling his tail. So this is him telling me that he's not comfortable with me picking him up. And so we're just gonna leave him in here because we don't wanna make him uncomfortable. And so we're just gonna leave him alone, but you can still get a great shot of him in his enclosure. But we don't wanna bother him too much. So we're gonna let him be because it's past his bedtime and he's crabby. <laughs> so these guys get to be about four to six feet, a little bit shorter than Harrison will be. And they commonly eat small mammals, um, sometimes birds, snake. This is Titan. He is a ball python. 
The reason they're called that is because when they're spooked or even when they're just comfy and laying down, they'll curl themselves into little balls. It's really cute. So Titan is a spider morph of a ball python. And so with that morph, when they're bred, um, they have a dominant gene that causes a neurological disorder called a wobble. And so he um, is disoriented most of the time. And so he'll be kind of upside down and have his head to the side and it doesn't affect him, you know, his living in any way, but he is just kind of a little bit dis disoriented compared to other snakes. So, but it just gives him a little bit extra cuteness. So in my opinion, and there's actually over 1000 different morphs of ball pythons. So these guys are bred to have all different sorts of colors and patterns. Um, and the most expensive one can get up to over $22,000 for one snake. So these guys are a very common pet in the pet trade and they're really cool for breeding. So he is a special type of morph, which is the spider morph. So, and another cool thing about these guys is that ball pythons all have their own unique pattern. So there's no ball python that has the exact same pattern. It's kind of like a human's fingerprints. And, oh, hi. A really cool thing about these guys, if we can see, I'll get up close here. So pythons have something called heat pits. So that's what these little little spots are on his face here. Oh, you a chew robe. And those help him to detect prey. So he can sense heat of his prey with those heat pits. And it gives him a cute little mustache. And these guys can actually live in captivity up to 20 to 30 years. So if you're ever looking to getting a pet snake, just know that they are a uh, quite a responsibility. They're very easy pets to take care of depending on the species, but ball pythons are genuinely a, generally a beginner snake. Um, you know, they do require a little bit more humidity than most snakes, but they do live to be quite old. So just know, you know, with, with any pet that, they are your responsibility, and of course you are responsible for them for the whole lives, right? Trying to give him a little bit of direction as to where to go. <laughs> he struggles a little bit in that department, but that's okay. He's so cute. All right, and then a uh, really awesome thing that we actually caught on camera is that Titan just shed. So um, I'm going to get his... This is just a piece of his skin here, but this is like literally two minutes ago fresh. So we actually got a really cool video. We'll play that here, but um, you can see his belly scales on the bottom there. And then on the back, you can actually see some of his pattern in the actual skin. So it's pretty cool. Can you see how the camera say bye? Okay guys, so I'm about to find Clementine and she is a tangerine Honduran milk snake and they are commonly found in the rainforest litter in Honduras, Nicaragua, Northeast Costa Rica. These guys can get up to about four to six feet and they can live over 20 years in captivity, about 15 in the wild usually. And so I'm gonna try and find her in here. We'll see how it goes. She just ate so today, so we're not gonna hold her for very long, but these guys commonly eat small mammals, birds. Uh, they're, they're known to eat lizards and snakes. You know, they, they actually are cannibalistic because they eat other snakes. That's a common milk snake trait. And um, the reason that they're called milk snakes is because they were always found in barns. And so people thought that they were drinking the cow's milk, which in reality, they were just in there because they were catching all the mice in the barns, but still cool fun fact. So let's see if we can find her in here really quick. Oh, there she is right there. Well, that was easy. My baby, come here. We're just gonna take you out for just a second, just to show off your beauty. Oh, come here. You're such a pretty girl. You can actually see the mouse in her stomach right there. So you can see she is still partially digesting it. So she has this big bulge in the middle here and they kind of move it down their body and down their stomach while they are digesting. So, oh, there you go. I got a little perch there on my hand. It's perfect. She's a very beautiful bright orange. These guys are 
obviously hard to miss in the wild because they're pretty darn bright, but they are freaking cuties. Right. We actually got her when she was hatchling and she was probably like this long and like that skinny. She was like a little worm. She's so big now and I can't believe it. And there's her, you can kind of see how her scales, you can see in between they're distended because that's how snakes stretch as they have the food in them. So, which we'll put her away right away just so she doesn't poop on me because I'm not feeling it today. Snake. Okay, so I am going to try and find Jack now. He also just ate today, so we're not going to hold him for very long. But Jack is a Sinaloan milk snake, and he's a little bit smaller than Clementine. He gets to be about three and a half feet, and they're normally found in Mexico. And milk snakes basically are the same. They will eat basically anything available. So reptiles, eggs, they'll eat other snakes, amphibians, birds, small mammals like rats and mice, which is what we feed them. Um, both of these guys are constrictors. They constrict their prey to kill them before they eat them. And a cool thing about these guys is that they are immune to some of the venomous snakes that they eat because um, otherwise, you know, clearly that would not go very well. So, all right. So a cool thing about these guys is that they use something called mimicry. And so with his coloring, he's trying to look like a venomous coral snake. So he's actually non-venomous. He's completely harmless. But with his colors... Predators will think that he's venomous and so they'll stay away or people because you know Some people don't know but that's okay. And you can also see <laughs> Jack's got a little bit smaller a bulge But right here is where his rat is So he's moved his down a little bit further than Clementine has but he's still working on digesting that so We'll see a big nice poop in the next couple of days and hopefully not in the next couple of minutes because that'll make me real sad So here get over here. Come shoot the camera He's so cute. Snake. Okay, guys, so this is Hog Dog, and he's usually a very, very picky eater, and he just ate, so we don't want him to regurgitate his meal, so we're just gonna keep him in here and make him comfortable, and so he can properly digest his meal, but we'll talk a little bit about him, and you guys can look at how cute he is. So, he is a Western hog nose snake, and these guys are found in North America. So they're usually found in dry, sandy areas such as the Great Plains. So we have them in North Dakota here. They get to be about 28 inches. That's for females. The females are a lot larger than the males. So hog noses are named after, obviously, their little nose. They have tiny little upturned noses that kind of look like pig noses and it helps them bury themselves in the sand. And their main diet is amphibians, so they eat lots of frogs and salamanders, toads, and they also will eat small mammals such as rats and mice, mostly just ma mice though because rats are a little big for them. And they're also known to eat small reptiles and even eggs. A funny thing about these guys is that when they are threatened, they will play dead. So they give off a really, really dramatic show. They'll stick their tongue out and they'll flip over and writhe around like they're dying and then they'll play dead so that things won't want to eat them. And they actually have a slight venom. So technically to humans, it would be kind of like a bee sting. You would probably have some slight swelling, but nothing that would kill you, of course. But it is deadly to the amphibians that they eat. So these guys are technically venomous, but they're not truly harmful to humans. Snake. 